second session is going to be a, a panel um, with uh, um, with Joseph Stanhope, Joe Stanhope from Forrester Research, Brian McNamee from Resolute Digital, and Blandon Casanay from NBC Universal. And it's really going to be, um, I want to take this into two directions, and one is around mobile strategy, um, what these folks here are doing, um, what they're seeing in the, uh, the landscape uh, that's working from a mobile strategy perspective, um, and secondly, from a mobile measurement perspective, really dig deep into the nuts and bolts about how they're implementing measurement, how they're recommending folks implement measurement, and what they're seeing as, as working. Um, I spend a, a couple of seconds uh, introducing uh, each one of these. Uh, we'll start in the in order uh, that they appear here. Um, so Joe Stanhope is a senior analyst for Forrester Research. Um, he's, uh, he serves the customer intelligence professionals uh, by covering web intelligence, web analytics, online testing and targeting, mobile measurement, um, and the overall online marketing suite. Uh, prior to joining Forrester, Joe was VP at both Alterian and MarketerNet. Um, Joe began his career at Experian. Um, Brian McNamee. Uh, Brian is managing partner at Resolute Digital um, with over 15 years experience working in digital agencies such as Ogilvy & Mather, Draft FCB, Sachi & Sachi, um, of, of Cornucopia and Virtual Who's Who of the uh, uh, um, agency space here in New York City. Um, and now uh, uh, Brian is, uh, as I stated, managing partner at Resolute Digital here in Midtown Manhattan. Um, Brian has a number of creative awards, including Art Directors Club, uh, ADDY, um, uh, New York Festivals, New Media, and the London International Advertising Awards. Um, at Resolute Digital, Brian's 40-person digital analytics, or excuse me, digital agency, uh, serves clients such as Samsung, Vespa, McGraw-Hill, and Sleepies. And last but certainly not least, uh, Blandon Kazanev. Um, uh, Blandon is uh, currently Vice President of Digital Media Research for NBC Universal. Uh, during his tenure at NBC Universal, uh, Blandon has overseen the digital measurement and reporting of two Olympics and developed a patent pending method for measuring unique visitors and visits on the mobile web. Uh, prior to landing at NBC Universal, Blandon worked at both MTV.com and Court TV. So lots of media experience there. Um, so, as I stated, I want to try and take this panel two directions, one around strategy um, and one around uh, a measurement. Um, so the first bit, uh, the first question I'll have for the panel um, would be for when you're formulating a, mo a mobile strategy, how should the following weigh in your decision? The first, I'll say, is kind of a build versus buy, internal versus external development, you know, versus a third party provider um, from a measurement as well as from a build of the, the actual website perspective. You go to like a net biscuits or usable net. Um, and so, Joe, you want to take that first bit, build versus buy from a mobile perspective? Build versus buy, great. Well, usually I try to think about um, strategy in sort of um, a sequence of two components. Uh, first uh, engaging via mobile and, and then monetizing. Uh, and when you get to build versus buy in many ways, it, it can be um, cultural based on the existing preferences of companies. I mean, some companies have a more advanced uh, strategy approach uh, and are comfortable with more of a, uh, an outsourced or even offshore uh, approach to development. Some very much prefer to do it in-house, so I think you have to be true to that. Um, I certainly see, in my experience, quite a bit of, of using uh, third-party developers uh, in the mobile space, and I think it's around, one, the skills, uh, but also um, the speed to market, mm -hmm. um, and just getting there uh, as quickly as possible um, and beefing up whatever uh, you know might be a gap in internally. And generally, that seems to work well for people, especially in organizations that may treat mobile as, as a product and there's revenue behind it. Uh, the only issue um, that I think you have to be really careful with it, if, is, uh, especially on the measurement side of things, it can disintermediate uh, some of the analytics uh, because you just have a, another layer of abstraction and separation between development and uh, the, the internal staff. So you do need to be smart about how you manage that. So a couple of follow-ups there. So um, speed and time to market is definitely a benefit of, of outsourcing. Um, but sometimes, especially from a measurement perspective, you're stating that there could be some missteps with regard to measurement implementation, depending on you know how well the third party knows your implementation, uh, your current implementation, your standards, as it, as it were. And sometimes you end up you know backstepping or actually you know having to go back and, and do rework. Is that you know have you have you heard and horror stories like that? We hear a lot of in the overall drive to get mobile especially apps out there, you know, just kick something in the curb as fast as possible because our competitors have it or uh, we need it, you know, tomorrow. <laughs> uh, and um, 
a lot of times, especially when you don't have to build a business case for it, it's a foregone conclusion that you're going to be doing this strategy, uh, they don't have to measure it, they didn't have to justify it, and so measurement is an afterthought, and a lot of things go out there initially without measurement, and they have to retrofit it later, which is problematic. Yeah, I can't tell you the number of times that clients come to us and say, you know, well, so we got this app out there and we want to figure out how it's doing. Like, oh, so would you would you implement as far as a measurement, you know, an SDK? Oh, uh, we're getting downloads from the App Store and Marketplace. <laughs> That's great. So, Brandon, same question to you: build versus buy, in source, outsource. Well, I mean, because ultimately I'm on the ultimately because I'm on the measurement team. Um, I don't necessarily control the strategy. I'm just chasing it. Mm. Um, typically, uh, the businesses that I support inside of NBC Universal use third parties. Um, and usually, uh, we're trying to fight our way into the development cycle to get metrics in there. Yeah. Um, that, that's, I mean, that's usually how it works. So do you find that, um, that sounds like it could be a battle, you know? Uh, so sometimes you find that um, if you've got a well-defined measurement plan or strategy up front, and you hand that off to the teams, or you've got something defined as far as a, a standard, as it were, is that is that more helpful? I mean, because you guys have been doing this for a while. I'm sure you've you got a, a, a good core set of metrics and a and a standard way that you want to see measurement implemented. Mm -hmm. Is it more you just kind of chasing these people down, or is it they're they're just moving so fast that again, as Joe stated, it's kind of an afterthought. It's usually they they're moving very fast, um, and usually we have a short window of opportunity to get the metrics in. And it also depends on what what kind of mobile measurement you're talking about. If you're talking about our websites, that's usually turnkey with a few customizations that we try to build in to track maybe some custom link tracking or mm. custom partnerships or refers. When it comes to apps, it's usually a, a far more difficult in the sense that even though the tracking is more steady um, or stable, um, because they're tagged on a one-by-one -one basis, mm. each app is, is, is tracked Part each app is a is a track by itself. That the, the compliance enforcing compliance becomes a difficulty there. And uh, Brian, I mean, you kind of a, have a perspective. You are the third party. From an agency <laughs> perspective, I think you should hire an agency to build your mobile website. <laughs> but um, well, no, I, I would say though to add on, um, we've worked with the analytics teams at big advertisers and big publishers to make sure that analytics is a piece of our mobile website development or mobile application development process. I think that one of the troubles is with testing. You know, you're in your quality assurance period, you've got three weeks to launch, and you're trying to get access to the client's Omnisure account to make sure that, you know, the right events are firing or whatever. You know, it, it seems like an afterthought to lots of QA processes. Um, you know, we're analytical in, in everything we do, so we think about it, but I could see how you could easily gloss over it and get kind of wowed at like the moving parts of an app and not think about the measurement behind it. So mm. I think it's also hard to staff experts in usability, design, information architecture around mobile. So if you're gonna build an entire staff dedicated to mobile inside of your organization, it's a pretty big commitment in terms of resources and time and training. So, um, you know, I think that it's best given to professionals. Mm, yeah. And one other point is that uh, uh, unlike, typically unlike web sites, mobile apps, they do different things. So you've got to figure out which, each, what the purpose behind each app, the intended user experience, the KPIs for each app. That's where a lot of the difficulty is. And so that brings me to, perfectly, to my next kind of question around this uh, mobile strategy discussion. So when you think about mobile strategy, there's there's lots of different ways that you can go with mobile, right? So uh, anybody in the first session, you know, I laid out all these mobile marketing techniques, um, you know, SMS, mobile web, mobile ops. Um, I guess if we think about mobile web versus mobile app versus feature phone versus smartphone, when to support and how, how does those decisions and how do you make those decisions when you're formulating your mobile strategy? Um, Landon? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So again, I'm honestly I'm not the person making those decisions in my in my uh, organization. Um, but what I will say is that what the things that tend to do better are the are the applications that uh, offer a user experience that's very similar to your other digital platforms. Um, so an example would be our very successful NBC Portal app, um, where we. 
um, had full episodes uh, available to users. Um, and I won't quote the exact share or overall video stream count online from that app, but it was a significant share. So in that instance, you've got a mobile app that basically is giving a similar experience to the WAP, to the PC, internet as well. Um, and so I've noticed that thematically across the board, that if, you've, if you're a site where you've got tons of PC games, then generally speaking, apps that you've developed that are more around that utility will tend to do better than others. And, and Joe, what would be your sort of direction to somebody uh, around, well, what should we do first, right? So do we need a mobile app? Should we build the iPhone app? Because everybody wants that. The marketing manager says we have to have it. I mean, what, what's your direction <laughs> when they come do. to you and say, we, we don't have a mobile strategy, where should we start? Yeah, that's so deceptive. I mean, Apple, just in terms of mind share, punches so far above their weight. You know, there's always this, not that they aren't important, of course, but there's always this, gotta have the iPhone app. Um, I say that um, the, the mobile website is, is table stakes. You have to have that. It's a logical extension. Um, it's a good way, especially because uh, you can iterate uh, a website faster than you can an application. It's a good way to learn about what works, what doesn't, um, and what's gonna resonate with your visitors and figuring out what the use cases are. Um, and if you're looking at your traffic and your understanding and you have a critical mass of users from um, smartphones uh, and certain uh, platforms, um, then that would be, you know, drive a, probably a justification. And if you have a kind of experience that would benefit from an application to start going that direction as well. Uh, I also tell people you get a lot of, do I do an app or a site? And I say this, these things are not mutually exclusive mm. uh, to cover all of your bases. Uh, eventually, many organizations will need to have all of those. So, so Brian, um, you know, you've got a client that come to you. We need that iPhone app now. Sure. I mean, I would agree with I would agree with Joe in that mobile web is a priority. Um, you know, we're seeing clients with over thirty percent of their overall site traffic coming from mobile devices. It's a no-brainer to have a mobile optimized web experience. If you're getting any natural search traffic, you've got to have you know a smart SEO strategy for mobile, uh, not necessarily mobile SEO, uh, which is a kind of a touchy subject now, but. Um, so I think mobile web for sure, uh, depending on the features and functions inside of your plan, you know, that's going to drive if you're also building an app. We've had clients say, I want to launch the camera from my mobile web browser. And you know, there's limitations technical that you simply can't be um, you know, obtained. So uh, mobile web is a no-brainer. I, I, the one thing I would only maybe deviate from something Bland has said is that I don't think your mobile website needs to mirror your traditional website. Um, I think that there's different things that come into play. I mean, it, it could work for some people, I'm sure, but there's you know the context of which when the person is using the app, you know what their behavior, how they're thinking about you know um, uh, their experience when they're doing it. So we're talking to clients about tablet specific experiences, which are largely geared towards entertainment, and you know the tablet is such a good media consumption device. So I think that there's an opportunity to provide different experiences from mobile web. Um, to even tablet and different device experiences. The features are a, really a fascinating thing. Um, you know, one of the great promises of mobile is to take advantage of a lot of the features that exist in iOS and Android and the, the, the really cool things that they can do contextually and, and, and personally. And um, you have to be really, I think, um, smart and judicious around how you take advantage of that functionality because uh, you can get really wrapped up in, in what's cool versus what actually contributes to an experience because every time you start taking advantage of those features, they can actually be platform specific. You're adding more and more development and uh, ongoing management complexity. So if you get carried away by what you think is, is really cool and all kinds of functionality we can take advantage of, you, you're making your life in many ways a very uh, much harder, uh, possibly in the long run, um, for potentially a very moderate gain. I think you have to be smart about it. And there's some simple things that you can really benefit from, like just click to call. I've, I've had customers who have had you know, they've had websites for years, they've never really understood how the website drives the phone calls, right? And now and with mobile devices, like just basic functionality on click to call is, is a, such a boon to them to have that kind of closed loop capability of measurement now. Yeah. So you don't have to get carried away to have great measurement and, and use uh, functionality. And so, you know, I, I think that the third piece of this really is about, you know, the, the features and functionality <coughs> inherent in smartphone devices. And I think, Joe, as you stated, you know, people get kind of caught up in, you know, the cool factor. Or wouldn't it be neat if, you know, when they shook the phone, this happened? You know, you know people aren't really so excited about running around, you know, shaking their phone. Well, they did in Vancouver. 
They did. Four hour. They did. Oh, yeah, that's cool. right. Yeah. <laughs> You're so planted. So you guys actually <laughs> built some apps that were like all about doing things with the phone. Um, like, uh, I, you know, tell me a little, a little bit about one of those. No, I think in, in that instance, again, it was coordinated to much of what we did on the, on air mm -hmm. and online. And you know, again, I, I think you know when particularly in my business where it's uh, ad supported and we're, it's not transactional based. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out what gains us critical mass. Um, and I, again, I, I think you know, for us, in, in, in getting the numbers so that we can bring in the revenue, getting a sizable audience so that we can bring in the revenue, um, a good place to start is with, uh, w w with a mobile execution that, if it doesn't mirror, certainly complements what you're doing on air and online, whether it's voting, and you know, with uh, compliments, what's happening on air uh, and online, whatever it is. I th I, what I've seen is that um, the apps and the and the mobile um, websites that have done the best have been those that have been in sync with some with the uh, with the execution on our other platforms. Wasn't there um, something associated with the Olympics? Right, it was like a. Um like a, a cheer? Or yeah, it was our cheer app, yeah. A cheer app, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we would you know, shake it up it for the Winter Olympics <laughs> in Vancouver. For the Winter Olympics, right, yeah, in Vancouver, yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you. That, and that was the first cool instance thing. actually where we saw, I believe, our app traffic was either e equal to or greater than the, uh, the traffic on our website. Okay, yeah, yeah. It, using that app is equal now to the website. Each and wasn't it for, for you guys, like the, the first day of the Olympics, the mobile traffic combined was equal to like the entire Olympics from like four years prior. Right, right, right absolutely. Just the mobile traffic. I, I remember that stat. I was like, that's just incredible. Um, when you think about the features to support, you know, camera, location, um, uh, accelerometer, Bluetooth, um, and you know, some of those things are only available when you're talking mobile application. Um, you know, location services are available via HTML5 within within the browser. Um, but you know, Brian, as you said, your know, camera is not there. Um, accelerometer, um, to a certain extent, yeah, definitely not Bluetooth. Um, when when clients or or you know you decide that you want to take advantage of some of these functions, I mean. Isn't there a cost-benefit sort of trade-off that has to be made? And Brian, I mean, how do you you know consult with, with clients on, on you know the guy that says you know what I have to have the camera app or the camera function in my you know website? Like, well, then you've got to build a mobile right. app, and that's going to cost you X. Right. Well, we've definitely had those conversations, and it, it often comes down to priorities, budget, and strategy. I mean, I think that with all the features out there, still the strategy and the concept is the big idea. I mean. Uh, you can bolt on all of the bells and whistles you like, but if what you're giving the you know, end user isn't valuable to them, they're not going to stick around. So uh, what we've actually done instead of kind of bolting on lots of shiny parts is you know, use predictive technologies to crowdsource the people using a mobile website and serve back all the people the same things, uh, the, the most crowdsourced, most popular information at first glance. So you're trying to engage the person with, with what's trending in their city right then. So we're being more creative and conceptual. I think the location services are certainly valuable. I mean, we've got clients who are local yellow page type clients, you know, um, and yeah, location services certainly make sense. Uh, I think it's got to be core to your strategy and, and you don't want to get hung up on just like whiz bang movements because they're cool and slick. Mm -hmm. uh, although we were speaking before the panel, I mean, I'm suggesting to clients to build tablet experiences and maybe using gesture-driven navigation if they're purely an experience, you know, there's a brand experience to be had, which I think is coming back now. You know, I think that video can be a piece of this tablet experience and, and you know, the kind of uh, bandwidth issues are less of an issue now. So I think you can have experiences and depending on what you want to get out of your mobile ex you know, experience. So. Um. This, Brian, uh, this question is for you as well. Um, so you're talking a lot about the content and functionality to include, include within a mobile website. Um, is that really the kind of the steps that you go through when you when you want to you know consult with uh, you know with a client and say you know how do you determine what really makes it into my mobile website? You said you, you don't just want to take your entire content and port it over to the mobile website or you know take your CMS and get a cool you know uh, mobile theme and put it on top and look now I got a mobile website. Right. So that's a bad practice. But so how do you you know how do you get around not just porting all your content over? Right. We've got a kind of a, a concept model that we use. Um, 
it's sort of, you know, we look at the context or location of the person. So are they staying on a street corner looking for a restaurant, or are they standing in the aisles of a Best Buy comparing televisions? So we're, we're, we're working with our clients to determine what's the context, where, where, this, where is this person going to use this mobile property, whatever it might be. And then we're looking at the consumer behavior. What's the mindset? Are they in a buying mode? Are they in a, you know, a research mode? Are they sitting on their couch watching TV and on their iPad at the same time? Um, and then we're looking at the device utilization. So do you, you know, are the features driving an application you know, uh, experience or can we do this in the mo on the mobile web? And we kind of put those three things together to formulate what features we think and what content we think should be brought into uh, this mobile property. Um, you know, I, I think we've got a shorter time to engage users, so you've got to be really smart about your experience. Um, if you can get them into an application experience, you've got a longer lifespan with them. You've got more disruptive things like push messaging, um, and you're going to experience longer time in app, you know, potentially. We're seeing it at least on our side, you know, 20 minutes inside of an application which has recipes inside of it is just like a great long engagement. So. Versus a you know, much shorter dwell minute, yeah. on a two minutes on a, uh, on a mobile website. Right. Yeah, and, and so Landon, when you guys think about what content goes into, you know, you've got a, a fixed web version of, you know, of a show site, and then what do you guys think about when you're putting it into a mobile web, in your websites? It's a really good question. And again, usually I'm chasing that discussion and trying to measure it <laughs> as opposed to sitting with the developers and coming up with the content. Um, what I can say, though, is that over time, um, what we and particularly for most of our websites, I mean our websites, they've been around for a very long time. And usually, part of the process is a very, it's a very iterative, iterative process um, that's informed by the metrics. Um, a lot of times, creative will start it with, they own, with their own ideas of what will work on a website. And after looking at the numbers, following the trending, looking at the different content types, that usually shapes what content gets either featured on that website, what's, what gets uh, stripped out, what gets uh, changed um, on, a, on a weekly or any, any even monthly basis. Hmm. Very good. I want to I wanna move into kind of the measurement discussion here. Um, so, Joe, a uh, straight question to you. you know, can brands rely on mobile measurement? Have we, have we come of age with mobile measurement? Uh, we have not. We have not. <laughs> You've heard it. You've heard it here. Um, it is uh, still pretty nascent, uh, in, in my opinion, from, from what I've yeah. seen. I think it will mature quickly, but today it's uh, in many ways like uh, the Wild West or the early days of the, of the fixed web. Um, uh, though it will accelerate, and um, you know, everyone in this room is no stranger to um, the, the, uh, the data quality and, and, and measurement uh, issues that come up with the traditional web. Many of those things pull through with the additional special challenges of measurement instrumentation and mobile, uh, the variety of devices and what kind of uh, technologies they will support. Um, and general immaturity in, in people uh, knowing how to deploy the technologies and, and use it uh, should they be able to deploy it successfully. So mm -hmm. it is very nascent, um, although, and, and certainly the numbers are not going to be perfect. You know, we're still uh, working on that. It's probably going to be a very long time if ever we get to a truly perfect number. We haven't done it with the web yet, so I don't know that it'll right. happen with, with, with mobile. Um, but you do need to measure it because you need at least that um, basic guidance uh, and proxy for what works and what doesn't uh, mm -hmm. at the guidepost. So it, it, just because the numbers aren't going to be uh, absolutely perfect um, now or potentially in the future doesn't mean you don't measure. You still need to do it. If it's close enough for horseshoes and hand grenades, it works on the, works on the, on the web, right? It's better than being blind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of people that, you know, that, that definitely are doing that. At least they're, they're realizing that, you know, hey, maybe we need some measurement on it, you know, even if it's not absolutely perfect. Um, and so, Brian, how, how do you see, I mean, you see a lot of different uh, clients and, and help them with their measurement um, implementations. Um, how are successful companies measuring mobile right now in your eyes? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it varies amongst publishers and advertisers. Um, you know, I think engagements, right, and time in app, time on site are, are obvious, you know, kind of traditional methods for measurement. Um, the click to call comment it was a good one. I think there's really direct, you know, basic uh, ways of measuring if your mobile campaigns are working or not, if your mobile pages are successful or not. So, um, you know, we're seeing huge uh, time in app, uh, which I think is great. We're seeing massive downloads for applications inside of iTunes, so adoption uh, is picking up. Um, and I think that we're able to create the, the, the conversion funnels. I mean, we're an analytics firm, so we think about it the way you would think about traditional web. And we're also watching natural search traffic and applying SEO strategies, like I said before, to 
uh, our mobile properties. Uh, the, the problem with mobile SEO is you sort of end up in this competing game where you don't want to be over-indexing your traditional web pages. So we're really defaulting more towards a, 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 a mapping, a, a link mapping strategy. So your mobile pages are already ranking great. Right. Your NBC, you've been around for a long time. You're not going to, your new mobile study is not going to outpace that page. So let's just make sure that we direct to the right mobile version of that page. So uh, we're trying to capture on all the traditional web, you know, Let's get organic traffic in. Let's get it in free and fast. Um, but then let's try to keep them there for longer periods of time and uh, viewing more pages. Great, great, thanks, um, Blandon. How are you guys instrumenting mobile? You've had a, quite, a pretty uh, varied past with actually implementing mobile. How are you guys doing it today? And maybe a little bit of the history lesson of uh, of how you guys started out. Yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm actually of the opinion that it's a mixed bag. I think in certain areas, particularly when it comes to mobile apps, particularly when it comes to tracking a unique visitor, <laughs> mobile apps, in my mind, still tend to be just as stable, if not more, than the PC internet. Mm -hmm. WAP tracking is another story. So I think even when you talk about mobile. I think that silo between apps and WAP still is relevant in that conversation. Yeah. When we think about things like time spent, um, that becomes a bit more convoluted, right? If someone goes offline, mobile app, and you know, I mean, you know, uh, analytics firms have come up with solutions for that within the past year or so. Um, but uh, you know, capturing that that uh, that uh, that time spent offline, um, or more or less getting at that. So I think those are the challenges that we face that differ from the PC for obvious reasons. Um, but I do think that it's a mixed bag. I think there's some metrics that are actually more stable depending on what portion of mobile measurement you're talking about, and there are other metrics that aren't. I do think that at the end of the day, I agree with Joe that um, you still got to do it. It's important because it'll still, at the end of the day, help you optimize <laughs> and optimize your site, gain uh, increase engagement, and i.e. in my business, impressions. Hmm. Can you maybe talk a little bit about you know, the specific technical implementation that you guys have gone through? Because I remember you know, talking to you a number of years ago, and you, basically there was no mobile measurement for, for the WAP sites, as you call them. Um, that was worth anything for you. You weren't able to get you know, unique visitor identification, and so you guys decided you'd build your own solution. Could you talk to us just a little bit about that evolution of, of implementation for NBCU? Yeah, so about maybe four years ago, um, uh, I had only done PC measurement, and you know, sales basically came to me and said, well, if we can't get an accurate, if we can't get an accurate, or at least a logical unique visitor count, right? Um, then we won't be able to sell. Page view measurement simply isn't enough. And what we were getting out of our analytics solution at the time were uh, unique visitor counts that were higher than our visit counts. And that started our journey into figuring out how we would actually do this. Um, and so we developed a, uh, basically, I mean, a simple alg algorithm for how we would count a unique visitor. Essentially, we prioritized uh, trying to find the, uh, the subscriber ID and the header, because that would persist. If, and we got whitelisted with a bunch of carriers. Um, and if we weren't able to detect that, we would try to set a cookie on the device. And if we weren't able to detect that, then we would be, uh, had a session side, uh, I'm sorry, a site side session ID that would persist for the visit. Um, and in that order is what we, that order, that hierarchical order is what we use to essentially establish a unique visitor. Uh, the net result of that was logical numbers. Um, not necessarily uh, accurate in the textbook sense of things, but what is? I mean, you know, we're, I don't know how many years out of TV measurement, and you know, <laughs> Nielsen sample is, in, is an accurate research is error in many respects. It's exactly what you're measuring, but the idea is to minimize that error, be consistent, and be transparent. And I think um, we, we, we've achieved that. Excellent, thank you. So, um, I know you and, and Chris Johansson, right? You guys got a couple of patents out there that's, uh, you know, Something on like that, that technology. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully those patents get, uh, get fully approved before hopefully. everybody moves off of feature phones. Exactly. <laughs> um, so um, I, I have a number of, of questions here. I want to be mindful of the time. I don't want to hog, you know, all the questions here. There's a number of folks here in the audience. Um, I'd like to go out to, uh, to you guys um, and, uh, and, and open it up for questions. Go ahead.